In this project, we will recreate a Terminator 2 side art set from a series of small scans. There's no simple way to scan a full-size cabinet, especially if the graphics are already applied. Some graphics were available to be applied to cabinets, and these can be easily scanned. But once artwork is applied to a cabinet, it's much more difficult to scan. The way to do it is to use an HP ScanJet 4670 type of flatbed scanner. This is a handheld scanner that you can move around and hold against the cabinet. It will lay flat against the cabinet, which is very important. It works fairly quickly, and you can use it with a laptop computer. It is important to press the glass tightly up against the cabinet, otherwise the image will be out of focus. Modern LED type scanners have a depth of field of 1 to 2 millimeters, so the unit must be pressed tightly against the glass. Use 200 dots per inch as the resolution setting with uncompressed TIFF files. You may get away with using JPEGs, but TIFF will give you the best quality. This quality is high enough to capture all the needed details, but low enough to create manageable file sizes. Use a straight board or a large T-square to scan every overlapping section in a straight line. This will make assembly later much easier. Make sure the cabinet surface is completely clean. Any small dust particle can scratch your scanner glass, and that scratch will show up on every scan as you move the scanner glass over the image. Overlap all scans, and then go back and scan any important parts of the artwork separately. For example, if your artwork shows someone's face, scan their full face in one scan. This way you will not have to piece it together from two or three scans later. Scan any half toning in one pass. You do not want to try to align all of those small halftone dots later. Scan the entire surface, even if you expect to redraw parts of it. Scanning it will make it much easier to size up later. Once you have all of the images scanned, open Photoshop, then create a new document with a transparent background at 200 dots per inch. The same techniques can be used to scan marquees or other artwork in sections. Smaller items should be scanned at 300 dots per inch. When finished with the side art, we will flip the image to make a second image for the opposite side. The first thing I'll do is create a new document. I measured my artwork so I know that it's 37 inches wide and 72 inches tall at its maximum size. My scans are at 200 dots per inch, so I'm going to set my resolution to 200 dots per inch and the background to transparent. Now I have an image the size of my side art. I'm going to load all of my scanned images. You can see them here. These are all TIFF images that were scanned from a Terminator 2 cabinet. I'm going to select all of them. and drag them into Photoshop. Keep the scanner in the same orientation. It makes it easier to assemble later. It's best to lay the cabinet down and use a straight edge or large T-square to scan in a straight line. Scanning an upright cabinet can mean making more adjustments because all of your scans will not be perfectly aligned. Now that all my small images have been imported, you'll notice that they're turned sideways. I can rotate them one at a time and drag them into the large image, but that would take a lot of time. So I'm going to instead rotate my large image and then roughly drag all of them into the correct locations. I know that my large side art is set to 200 dots per inch because I created it at 200 dots per inch. I'm going to select my first small scan and double check by image, image size, and I can see that this one is 200 dots per inch. My width is 8.5, and, 
my height is 11.7. Those are just the settings on my scanner. So I'm going to cancel that since I know it is at 200 dots per inch. If this were not 200 dots per inch and my large image were 200 dots per inch, I would need to change one of these. If I drag a 300 dots per inch image into a 200 dots per inch document, it will change the size and it will make it much larger than it actually is. If you make a scan of a large cabinet at 200 dots per inch and you pull it into a large document that's 300 dots per inch, the cabinet will look like a miniature cabinet once it's assembled because it will be the wrong resolution. I know both of these have the same resolution, so I can simply select my arrow tool and grab and drag the small image into the larger image. You can see it appears right there. So I'm roughly going to move it into the correct location. And then I will move to my next scan. I'll also drag it into the correct location. And I will close them as I go. I've now loaded all of the small scans into one large document. This is just a rough collection with things placed more or less where they will go. The first thing I'm going to do is save this. Make sure to save it as a Photoshop type file. This way if I have any problems I can always go back to the saved file and I will not have to drag all of my small images into the large image again. Now that all my small scans are imported I'm going to rotate my image back so I can work on it normally. Now that my image is oriented correctly, I'm going to zoom in at the top. I need to pull in some construction lines, but I don't see my rulers, so I'm going to select View Rulers. Now I can click on my ruler and pull down and it will drag in a construction line. This will allow me to keep the edges straight. I'm going to move to the back. I'm going to also pull in a construction line just a little from the end. So this is my first image. I'm going to make sure that I have my arrow selected. I'm going to select this layer by right clicking. The layer will come up and I can select it by clicking on the option. You'll see that in my layers, it, this layer is now highlighted. This is layer 32. If I grab this, you see how it moves around. I'm going to align this with my construction mark, and you can see that it doesn't quite align perfectly. It's a little bit twisted. The original cabinet was straight in this area, so I'm going to adjust my image slightly. The easiest way is to select Control T. This will allow for free transform. And if I move my cursor off of the image, it will eventually turn into a double arrow that will allow me to rotate the image by dragging. So I'm going to rotate the image until it looks aligned, and then I'll hit Enter. You'll see that the construction line and the image are now fairly well aligned. That's good enough for now. I'm going to move my image in a little bit, make sure that I don't have any of it cut off. So my very first image is now in place and it's properly aligned. A second image I will select by right clicking. I can move it to make sure that I have the correct image selected. You can see that I overlapped heavily some of these scans. The logo for Midway the W is repeated. This W is complete, so I want to keep it. I want to make sure that this layer, which is layer 31, is underneath layer 32. And if I look in my layer order, I can see that that is the case, so I don't have to change anything. So I'm going to move my layer over until these two align. You can see that they snap together and it's hard to align when the image snaps like that. 
So I'm going to zoom in extremely close. And once I zoom in, the snap effect goes away. Now, I don't really know how close in I can do this. So I'm going to select my other layer, which is layer 32. I'm going to change the opacity. This will allow me to see through it. If I set the opacity around 50%, then you can see how it changes. I can also turn my layer on and off. You can see layer 32 is still there, but we can see through it fairly well. This allows me to line the bottom layer very accurately. What I look for is an edge that I can align. I see here the top edge of the A for layer 32 and I can see here the top edge of the A for layer 31. What I want to do is move these until they align. And right there they align perfectly. You can also see that the half toning aligns pretty well on this one. Sometimes it will not align that well and you will have to do some additional adjustments. I'm going to select a brush that is fairly small and I'm going to show you what I mean. Since layer 31 is selected I would be erasing on layer 31. I do not want to do that. That's my layer on this side. I want to erase on the layer on the top. The first thing I'll do though is I'll change my opacity back to 100 percent. This is a normal setting and that's where I want it. I'm going to turn off layer 31, the one on the right, to show you how erase works. I can erase small portions like this. I'm going to undo that and put layer 31 back up there so we can see it. If I roll down, you can see that our A aligns pretty well, but there may be some problems with the alignment in here. If I take my erase button and erase, I can erase back to a point where they do align. Often, you can do this in a corner. Corners frequently align more easily because you can erase the parts that don't align and leave the parts that do align. This one already aligned pretty well, so I'm going to keep it like it is. You can see as we go up here, a lot of the half toning does not align. There's no way to fix this, but you may be able to use the clone tool or the erase tool to make this a little bit cleaner. You can at least use the clone tool or the erase tool to take out the straight line it will be less noticeable in the final print that way. I'm going to zoom out. I'll locate my next panel, which in this case is layer 3. See how it moves there? I want to make sure that it's underneath my previous layers. The easiest way to make sure it's underneath all my other layers is to simply grab it in the layers listing and pull it all the way to the bottom. Now I know it's at the bottom of all the layers. I'm going to zoom in. Generally look for something that I can use to align the two images. And I actually don't see anything in his hair or in the design that I can use to align these two. I'm going to zoom out. I may need to use another piece first. This image has most of his hair. Instead of attempting to align his hair with this side and this side, I'm going to move this layer to the top so that it's on top of all the other layers. Now you can see that it's on top of all the layers. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to adjust the opacity of this layer so that we can see through it. Now we can align his hair with the existing hair pieces that are there. I see a small piece of hair that sticks up there and there and over here. I'm going to move this up until those all align perfectly.
going to zoom in a little bit to make sure that it's exact. And now they're aligned. I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to adjust my opacity back to 100%. Now I have his hair aligned. So I can go back to my other layer, which was layer 3, Now we have a point that we can use for alignment. So I'm going to zoom in again. And you can see that there are certain parts of the hair that match. So I'm going to change my opacity of the layer that's on top, which is layer 5. Change it to around 80%. I'm going to select my other layer and move them until I can get a good alignment. I can adjust them, make sure that I'm actually looking at the right place. And these do align, so I can now zoom back out. I will select the layer that I changed the opacity on and put it back to 100%. You can see that when I scanned, I missed a small portion of the image. This happened because I was scanning freehand. If I had been using a straight board and I had laid the cabinet down, I would not have missed any spots. That's the best way to do it. For this scan, it will not matter because I'm going to make some additional changes, so this will be okay. So I'm going to start with the next row. I will zoom in slightly because the piece is already roughly in place. And I will select this layer. If I move it, I can see that it's there. I want to align it with his hair, but I also want this layer to be on the very bottom. I'm going to select the layer that I just placed and adjust the opacity. Now I'm going to select the layer that I just moved to the bottom, which is this layer. I'm going to move it until it is in the desired place. Need to zoom in a little bit to make sure that I'm aligning it correctly. I can even go down to the pixel level and make sure that I align pixels as exactly as possible. I zoom back out. This layer is on the bottom. You can't really see any parts of it because the other layers are on top of it. But I wanted to make sure that I had the edge of my cabinet aligned correctly. As I look at the image, I can see that we're still good out to this edge and we're ready for the next row. I did a lot of overlap scans so I may not use all of these scans. This looks like the next scan in the series. I want to make sure that it's on the bottom but I also need to be able to see it so I'm going to move some of these others slightly out of the way. I'm going to move this one roughly into place. We can see where it is. I can align using his hair in this area, so I'm going to zoom into that. I'm going to select the layer that's on top. But first, I'm going to make sure that this layer is actually on the very bottom. I always want to put my new layers on the bottom. That way I don't cover anything that I've previously aligned. I'm going to select the layer on top now and adjust the opacity so I can see through it. And I reselect my new layer that's to be placed. I look for a common element that I can align.
it's important they be aligned very close, especially if you have half toning in the image. Now I'm going to select the layer that I changed the opacity on and put it back to 100%. And I will zoom out. And you can see that this new scan is now in the correct place. I would continue like this until I have the entire image filled in. This is just a rough layout so that I can get everything in place, but I do want it aligned correctly. Once it's aligned correctly, I will go through and I will clean it up. I've got a good bit of his face assembled now, but you can see there's a problem right here. These pieces do not align. The scanner is not in the same orientation when it scanned all of these areas. This is a problem even if you use a T-square or straight edge to align your scanner. There is a way to fix this. I'm going to zoom in a little closer. Since we've been putting every layer at the bottom of all the other layers, I know that this layer, which is the previous layer, should be on top of the others. So I'm going to click and select that layer. I can turn it off to see exactly where it is and what's beneath it. I see that this layer is actually beneath the layer underneath it. So I'm going to turn that one off. And I, now I can see if I turn off layer 29, his ear looks good. If I turn layer 29 on, his ear looks messed up. If I move over, layer 29 also messes up some of his face. But if I move farther down, we can see that layer 29 is important because it has his lips and uh, his chin. So I need to determine how much of layer 29 I want to keep and how much I want to get rid of. I know that there is a problem with his ear so I'm going to verify that layer 29 is on top and selected. And I'm going to select my race tool. Now, if I begin to erase part of layer 29, it will expose the layer underneath it. So I've taken away the bad part of his ear. And I've exposed the layer underneath it. And I continue like this. I take away whatever I need to take away until I find an area such as this white where I can make two layers meet without showing a straight line or any type of disjunction. You can also use natural edges such as his glasses. If I had needed to make an adjustment there could adjust his glasses. You'll also notice that we missed a really small strip here, but I can clone that out later. There's also some damage to the glasses here. I'll clone that out later also, using the same techniques that we discussed in repairing marquees. Now, earlier, when we turned off layer 29, we could see a shift in his nose and his glasses. Most of it is okay. There's a little problem here. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to also take out part of his nose. There's a natural line along here. So I'm going to take out all of layer 29 along those natural lines. That'll make any imperfection much less noticeable. I'm going to zoom out to take another look. Now if I turn off layer 29, we can still see a little bit of shift in his glasses. And since we do have good glasses underneath them, I'm going to go ahead and take these out. I'm going to take out the layer 29 part of the glasses to reveal everything beneath it. Now I'm looking for any problems 
or anything else that needs to be erased or changed. And now this looks pretty good. Before we had some straight lines in here. Now they're all gone. It's not a perfect match, but uh, we could spend all day making small adjustments and trying to change the angles. But this, uh, this looks good, so I'm going to keep it the way it is. As I've been working, I've noticed a small problem. The very top of the cabinet is not the farthest forward point of this side. This left me with a gap at the back and have a piece here that I cannot place because it is off the canvas. I can fix this by selecting Image, Canvas Size. I'm going to change my width to just an arbitrarily large value. I'm going to add a few inches to it. Uh, let's make it 45 inches. There's no reason to expand it in all directions since the right side's already too far out. So I'm going to expand it into the left direction. Select OK. You'll see that this has expanded the left side, so I can now move my piece and place it appropriately. I've now finished arranging all the small scans. They should be in the correct locations. You can see that I missed a spot here and here. This is why it's important to use a straight edge or a T-square when scanning. It will help you avoid missing spots. This is OK at this point because I'm going to make some major changes to the background. Also, I intentionally did not scan the entire bottom of the cabinet because most of it was black. I'm going to black this out so it's not necessary to scan those areas. Also, I'm not going to reuse this T2. I'm going to redraw this. Since this is such a large section and it's all solid colors, it will be a lot easier to simply redraw it than to try and restore it. It will be very difficult to take out all the small specks of dust, all the scratches, and to realign everything. It would be much better to simply redraw it. In the background, the half toning takes up the entire blue area. Also, someone has used blue paint to touch it up. So there's some areas that we simply can't repair. This really isn't worth the time it would take to repair anyway. It looks like a nice blue gradient. So what I'm going to do is take out the entire blue background and replace it with a blue gradient. You also see that there is a red outline along the outside of the cabinet. I would never try to restore this. It would simply take too long. It would be much easier to redraw a new line and lay it over the old line. Instead, I'm going to take the line completely out. This will alter the original artwork, but it will make it much easier to install, and it will also mean that this artwork can be used on other cabinets, cabinets other than the original T2 type cabinet. Right now, I'm going to zoom in and go over every area to make sure that I haven't missed any areas. I'm looking for straight lines, straight lines like this one. This one doesn't matter because I'm going to take out the background. So I want to look at my major artwork and I'm looking for straight lines that need to be repaired or areas that were badly misaligned. Everything looks good in my Schwarzenegger character. So I'm going to flatten this image. When you flatten an image, what you're actually doing is you're merging all the layers into one layer. This way when you make an adjustment you don't have to worry about which layer you're on. Select layer, flatten image, discard hidden layers. Some of my scans were not needed. For instance I might have scanned the same area twice. So I'm going to select OK. Once you flatten an image it will also reduce the overall file size. I'll save this as a different file name that way if I made a major error or if I discover a flaw, I can go back, make the adjustment, and then reflatten it later. I'm going to change my background by double clicking on it. Photoshop automatically attempts to name it layer zero. That'll be okay, so I'm going to click OK. Now I have an actual layer, not a background. This gives me some additional options. I'm not going to use them right now, but I want them available later, such as background transparency. My image is now flat, so I only have the single layer. You'll notice that my construction lines were used to align the very top. They were not used to align the back, though they could have been. And you'll also see I have some additional unused area. I'm going to crop my image, but first I have to set the boundaries. So I'm going to move my construction lines in. 
so that they define the edges of the artwork. I already defined the absolute height of the artwork based on the original cabinet, but I want to add about an extra inch just to have some safety margin in this. So I select image, canvas size, 74 inches, and it's okay for it to expand evenly top and bottom. That will give me an extra inch at the top and the bottom. You'll see the transparencies appear at the top and at the bottom, so I have my extra inch top and bottom. I no longer need these edges, so I'm going to crop them out by selecting my marquee tool. First I will need to remove my top construction line by simply dragging it back into the ruler and letting it go. I'm going to click image crop. Now that I've cropped the image, I'm going to select image canvas size and I'm going to increase it again. It was cut to 37 inches and my original was 37 inches. So I'm going to make the new size 39 inches and I'm going to let it evenly expand on both sides and click OK. Now I have a known 1 inch border. This will make it easy to apply and this will give a border that can be trimmed off for a perfect cabinet fit. I'm now going to zoom in and fix the scratches and any damage. I'm either going to replace this logo or remove it. Since this may be an alignment problem, I may simply remove it. The areas in the background I'm not concerned with on this particular piece of artwork because I know I'm going to replace that with a gradient later. The only part that really matters is the Schwarzenegger character. You can see that someone has scratched out an eye here and we missed a part of our scan there. We also missed a part here. So I'll go through and I'll use the clone tool to repair these areas using the same techniques that I used to repair marquees. I finished most of the touch up. I have a little bit left to do on his gun. I painted in this area black because it should have been solid black. We have a big scratch here so I'm going to use the clone tool to repair this. Won't take out any additional scratches that are very noticeable. Probably won't get them all this time, but after it's printed out, we'll find some additional scratches and we'll see which ones are visible and which ones aren't. Also, the end of the barrel really needs to be extended since we're going to make this a more generic side art piece for other cabinets, not just the original. We'll need to extend it so that it can cover other cabinets that might be a different size. I've now used the lasso tool to lasso an area around the Schwarzenegger character. I've used Control C and Control V to copy and paste him. So now I can turn off my main layer and I have a new layer called Terminator that just shows the Terminator. The reason I did this is because most of the elements, actually all of the elements in the original piece can be redrawn more easily than they can be repaired. Also, I'm going to do away with the red border, so I no longer need that. 
This will make it much easier to recreate a new background. Now we'll start redrawing the T2 logo. I did some internet searching and I found a Terminator 2 font. That made it much easier than redrawing. All I had to do was retype the T2 and the Terminator 2 at the bottom. Now I'm going to select a black background color, the rectangle, then I'm going to draw a large rectangle to fill the bottom. I'm going to make sure this is on the very bottom of my image, but just above the layer that I created when I edited all my small scans together. Now we can compare this to see what it looks like. I've created my T2 with a drop shadow, but I can see that that disappears. So I'm going to change my mode to normal so it will always show up. And that looks better. I go back and if I turn on my background, my black background, see what it looks like. If I turn it off, you can see that it does align with the original. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to change my original background at the top. So I'm going to turn off the original artwork. That leaves me with my new T2, my new bottom, and my modified Schwarzenegger. I did cut him out using the lasso tool and I also selected him and I used a select feather in order to feather this edge that will make it blend more easily into the background I'm about to create. So I'm going to select my paint bucket and I'm going to hold on that so I can change to the gradient tool. I need some colors I'm going to turn my background back on so I can match those a little bit better. I want a blue similar to this dark blue. I'm going to just grab a nice dark blue. Click OK. Then I want my background color to be a lighter blue, more like uh, in this area. So I'm just going to sample that. See how that comes out. That came out pretty good, so I'm going to keep that. Select OK. Now I'm going to turn that off and I have my gradient tool still selected. I don't want to just do this on any layer so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name that my gradient layer. Since this layer is selected that's where my gradient will be applied. And This started dark in the upper left corner and it was lighter in this area. So I'm going to drag my gradient like this That created a nice background gradient. I'm going to drag it to the bottom. And that's what the final product looks like. Of course I could have put some more time into this and I can replace the Midway logo by simply retyping it and applying the correct font. I can redraw the lines around the outside of the cabinet as well, especially if I want to replace an original cabinet. This will be a good alternative for other cabinets and it will replace any damaged artwork that other people may have on their Terminator 2 cabinets. The same procedure would be used on almost any side art that is either full side or applied medallion size artwork. These are repaired using the same techniques used to repair marquees. The only difference is you have to assemble them first and you have to be careful to align everything correctly or to erase areas so that they look like they're aligned.